back on. Yeah, sometimes it's just not happy. I'm going to turn this air conditioner off. We have Miss Jane online with us. Hello, Miss Jane. So we're already rolling. So in case you didn't hear a moment ago, we did very well at the uh, yard sale yesterday. We raised two thousand six hundred dollars. So we are very, very close. If we go with the lower priced option, we already have enough for the freezer. If we go for the higher priced option, we're just about a little under two thousand short. The lower Yeah, the, the shipping container unit, yep. Yeah. I kind of like that idea because it's mobile. Well, we're still trying to get all the information. So if we get one of those, we're, we're going to have to do some add-ons to it. And we still haven't gotten a good answer from the power company if it's going to cost us more to run a three-phase meter okay. instead of single phase. So basically, we're looking at one option, which is buying a refrigerated shipping container that has the refrigeration unit on it. And then the other option is the actual building of the, the outside walk-in. Um, right now, that's a higher price, but it's set up and ready to rock, and it has um, a warranty. So not, not just on the equipment, but also a service warranty for a full year. So it's like we could save a few thousand dollars by going with the shipping container, but it's not turnkey, and we're going to have to... We'd have to put in a curtain and a ramp and probably change the door around a little bit. Um, so it's kind of, I think in the end, they're going to be pretty close. Yeah, John, but we're waiting for some more information on that so we can really so tell. Right, so generally, generally, that's what we've been reading, that... The shipping containers aren't as well insulated. They're just, the refrigeration unit is so powerful, it just gets you cold no matter what. But that uses a lot more electricity. Right. So it looks like, we, we don't have all the numbers for both to compare apples to apples, but it looks like the shipping container is going to be a little more expensive to run. Um, one of the bonuses is they're mobile. So if you ever decide to move it or we want to sell it, you can do that. If you build it in place, it's there. So we're still trying to figure it out. I think it's going to end up being one of those buy once, cry once kind of things where it's better to spend a little more money on the front end and get something you're happy with. I don't know whether stationary shipping containers are like over-the-road shipping containers that are refrigeration units. Mm -hmm. They run on diesel fuel. Yeah, so this is not an over-the-road. This is, this is like a sea can. It's a 20-foot sea can. And it has an electric unit on it. Now, they're made to hook up to a power pack on ship. So they're made to run off a of three phase. Now, the pantry is going to run a new meter for that. And the pantry is going to pay that electric bill. So the church doesn't pay for that electric, which is probably something a lot of the church people were wondering. Are we going to be paying for the electric for that? So since we're running a new line from the pole, you can get three phase on cedar here. Um, so we're trying to figure that out. So three phase is a little more efficient than single phase, but it's probably less well insulated. The, the doors and the safety issue is a big thing too. When you buy what's made to be a walk-in cooler, there is safety latches on the inside. So if, if the door ever gets shut while you're inside, you can get out. Right. With a shipping container, if somebody happens to swing that lock from the outside while somebody's in, you're done. <clears throat> can't get out. So that's what I was saying. The door will have to be changed. So it's, I don't know. But pray for us for wisdom as we're trying to figure this out. And um, I'm guessing within probably a month we'll be making that decision. Now, either way, the church 
good in Cambridge Oaks. Are we going to be taking out some of the freezers that are in the kitchen now? Well, right now, two of those units are convertible, so they can be either freezer or fridge, and we always have to run them as freezer. So right now, I don't think we would be removing anything. There would just be times when we run it less. I think the overall idea here is that that would be used for long-term storage. So whatever we planned on using on pantry day, we would bring into the kitchen before pantry day. So that on pantry day, when the gym's full of people, we're not running back and forth to the outside unit all the time. That'll be, so deliveries can be made directly into that unit from the truck. Because right now, like with Edgar going to get the chickens, he goes and gets them a case at a time. If we can have a whole pallet of them delivered and put them right into the freezer, then that's a lot, a lot handier for us. So that's the goal. Some of this we're going to have to figure out as we go. Once we get it in, we're going to have to figure out our workflow and, and what's going to be best. But, oh, I see what you did there. It's going to be cool. Oh. No, I mean, the freezer. <laughs> I thought that was a good dad joke. Yeah. yeah. All right. So anyway, pray for us because we're trying to figure out those details. Um, but I am very glad that um, they, the pantry stepped up and they said they don't want it connected to our electric. They're going to run a new meter, just like we have a separate meter for the streetlight out there. So this will be a separate electric bill, completely separate from the church's account. So we're giving up some of our parking lot space for it over there, but um, other than space, it won't cost us anything. Oh, yeah, we have plenty of room across the street, yeah. So we're in good shape. Um, let's see, that was the one announcement. What else? Oh, well, Pantry Day is next Saturday. So if any of you have needs or know someone who does, we have food to give. Um, Darlene and Jeff have been busy at work. Um, they are more than caught up. They are well ahead. We're in great shape. Um, so we should be ready to rock for Saturday um, with chickens, hot dogs, eggs, um, banana bread, pumpkin bread, and the shelf-stable foods. And if somebody wants to buy steak for everybody, that's great. Just talk to me. I'll show you where to put it. No? <laughs> I think that would be interesting, yeah. Maybe we could take a shot at hamburgers again, yep. Yeah. Sure, sure. Uh, my mom is on. Hi, Mom. So I think that's all for the pantry. The, we're kind of in need of the stuff we're usually in need of. Things like um, spaghetti sauce and jelly, we always run out of those. The kids' food, so... Uh, ravioli, spaghettios, beefaroni, ramen noodles, um, instant oatmeal, that kind of stuff that we'd like to make sure the kids have. Um, we have the food for this Saturday. We are saving up for the next distribution. So that's kind of what we're, we've, we're finally to the point where we're not scrambling for right now. With the boxes that Darlene and Jeff have packed, we should be good for this Saturday, but now we're starting to prep for the next deliveries to Village Arms and Pensgrove Towers. Right. Well, just so everybody knows, you know, about a year ago, we had about eight regular volunteers. And when Jim and Carol just printed name tags, they did 48, and then we found some extras on top of that. So we have over 50 people who are on our volunteer roster. Now, they're not all here every month, but we, we regularly have at least 20 volunteers. So we're finally to the point where we're not scrambling the day of to pack the boxes we need that minute. We're finally kind of getting a flow here. So it's been a year of process, but Everybody's been working very hard, and you know several churches are involved in this. Of course, St. Ambrose hosted us for the um, yard sale, which was wonderful. They ended up hosting us inside because of the rain. So, of course, we made a mess of their building because it was raining, so people were tracking mud in, and they were very gracious about that. 
So uh, everybody's working together. Oh, the other thing I didn't tell you guys, if you didn't hear, all of the clothing that got donated, instead of selling it at the yard sale, we took it all to the Assembly of God Church for their clothing, clothing closet. So instead of us trying to make money off the clothes that were donated, we gave that to the other church because they distribute clothes the same way we distribute food. And then everything that was left over is going to Ranch Hope. So everything's getting used, nothing's going to waste, and it's all helping different local ministries. So that's always a question, you know, what do you do with the stuff that doesn't sell? And uh, it's all going to Ranch Hope. So if you see lots of puzzles up at Cowtown this summer, you'll know why. Um, but yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Um, our sign-ups are available online for our summer camps for the district. We have teen camp, we have kids camp, and we have family camp. Uh, teen camp is the first one. That's June 18th to the 23rd. We do know that that is a conflict for some New Jersey students because of when schools get out. They're working next year to bump teen camp to the back so that they don't have anything starting that early in June. Um, but for this year, it is going to be early. It was kind of the best they could do. Um, there's a flyer up out in the hallway for family camp at Irma. So if you are interested in that, you can, uh, there's a QR code on there. You can take a picture with your phone and it'll take you right to the website. Um, they, they do have lodging available at Irma if you want to stay down there. They have uh, sites for tent camping. They have spots for campers. And they have rooms available. Now, they don't have a ton of rooms, and they do tend to sell out. So if you think you're going to want to rent a room for the week of camp, you should get on that. Um, Sharon Gipple, Sharon? Shannon. Sharon. Shannon? Shannon. I don't remember. Sorry, Mrs. Gipple. Um, it's, on the, it's on the flyer. But the dates for teen camp is June 18th to the 23rd. Kids camp is July 6th to the 10th. And family camp is June 24th to 30th. So sorry, I said them out of order. Yep. So they are going to be at Irma camp. So there's our family camp at Irma that is hosted by our district. But then Irma also has a week of their own camp. So that week, the week of Irma camp, um, Dr. Manley is a speaker, and Ricky, who we had for music, he's the musician. For New Jersey, or for Philadelphia District Family Camp, our speaker is Dr. Aaron Willis, who's not related to Carrie Willis, but is a friend. Um, and the worship is going to be different uh, worship teams from the district. People, well, I don't think it's going to be like all one church, but it's going to be different worship leaders from the district who are participating to lead worship. So you'll see some familiar faces up there for that, too. Okay, I think that's all my questions. For Irma and for Family Camp, they are doing meal plans. So if you think you're going to be there every day, you can do just a lunch plan, just a dinner plan, or the whole thing. And it is a little bit cheaper. I think it's $7 for lunch and $10 for dinner. Um, they do, you do have to register ahead of time for the night of the fish fry because that always sells out. Um, everybody loves to go down there for the fish fry. So, yeah. Good stuff. Getting all our, our summer booked up already. Um, any other questions about announcements? Sure. She is. Yes. Yeah. Debbie Andrews is the mission president for the district. And then our zone representative is Kim Eisenberg, who's at the Millville Church. So some of you might have seen her on Saturday at the lunch. Yeah. I heard some people got to sit with my parents, too. Yeah. All right. Any other questions? Okay, good. Oh, yes. Off the record. Off the record. Remote? Remote? It's a, yeah, one, I, the one that was out, I put in. And the one that I had, I just stuck in the mailbox in case somebody needed to get back in there. So one is in the house and one is in my mailbox. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I did check the door one more time. Yeah. <laughs> we emptied out the garage on Friday. Yeah. Yeah. So the the automatic garage door opener is very convenient. 
No, the garage. No, the garage. Right there. The brick house right here. Oh. There's a garage attached. And um, an anonymous donor generously installed an electric garage door opener. So now we can just hit a button and the door opens. So when you store stuff and people need to get in and out, you don't have to give everybody keys. You just beep and it opens. We have some news that we will be announcing next Sunday, but I think we can go ahead and spill some beans now. What do you think? Should we spill some beans? Okay. So we are still on a search, and we have not found... So we're kind of looking for several different things right now, right? So we're looking for a youth and family pastor and a worship pastor. The ideal would be both of those people part-time so we could use the housing as part of their salary. We haven't found that yet. What we have found, um, so you know Frank and Karen Onesti, who've been coming here. They led prayer at Pantry the last couple months. Uh, Frank is the one who took all the pictures down the hallway. Um, well, Karen is a pastor, and she has been doing a ministry at um, a nursing home up my way, up where I live, called the Terraces. And through their volunteer work with the Pantry, she felt led to, to start working with Village Arms and Pensgrove Towers. And since she feels being led in that way, she did a lot of prayer, and me and her and her pastor, we all prayed together at Revival, and she would like to move down here. So um, I, don't wanna, I wanna respect privacy, but also let everybody know what's going on. Um, she is not seeking a salary. So she, they'd like to move their membership down here and we're just gonna help with expenses. Like if she wants to serve communion, we'll supply communion, that kind of stuff. So we did get an associate, not the, not the two that we were looking for, but the other one that we really need right now too. So her work down here is gonna allow us to have a much more regular presence at um, Village Arms and um, Pensgrove Towers. Yeah. So we've already talked to the leadership at those places. We were going to do this just having her volunteer here and maintain her membership at the other church, but she felt that if she was doing all this ministry with us, that they'd like to come down here. They announced it to their church this morning, they told me. So that's why we wanted to make sure that they were able to announce it to their church, mm -hmm. and then we were going to give a week and announce it in our service after that, because we didn't want their church to find out from us. It's all good things, but we wanted to let her tell her church first. Um, Um, we are regularly delivering food. Uh, Chris brought food there on Saturday from Wawa. Um, so they have, they're working with us where we can do drop-offs in their community room. They have like a keypad access. And we're working with them. So we are actually able to make deliveries whenever we need to. So that's very convenient for us. Um, some, like Pensgrove Towers, we can only make deliveries on weekdays when they have people in the office. But Village Arms and Ken Avenue, they're able to squeeze us in at odd hours. Basically, we just bang on the door at Village Arms and they're like, we're the food people! And then they let us in. It's not quite like that, but it's close. Yeah, yeah Bush of the Blessings is gearing up, so there should be lots of produce coming in. So pray for Jim and Carol as they drive hither and yon. 25th of May, right? Yeah, this coming week. Yeah, because berries are already out. So the, the vegetables are just coming. But yeah, the early stuff's already out. So that means farmers have extra, and that means we are going to be making deliveries. So I don't know if we'll get anything for Saturday. It's, it's short. It's only two days. So I don't know if we'll get anything for Saturday. But we should definitely have produce for next month. And we'll have stuff to deliver to the other locations in between. Yeah, this expansion has been an answer to prayers, and I guess while I'm rambling, we'll just keep rambling for a minute. This has been a big part of our prayer as the leadership of the church. Um, I feel very strongly, and I think the whole board agrees with me, that as the body of Christ, part of what we are called to do, a big part of what we are called to do, is care for widows and orphans. Now, I know that that term doesn't exactly apply to all the places we're going, but it means that as the church, we are called to go where people have need, where people are hurting. 
So that's why we're pouring so much energy into our Sunday night program with the kids and having all these neighborhood kids come in here. There were about 15 kids sitting in the parking lot when we pulled in tonight. And they came chasing after the car when we pulled in the parking lot. I mean, they love being here because they know it's a safe place where they're cared about. We give them a good meal and we love them. Um, and, you know, it started with Village Arms, moved to Pensgrove Towers, now Ken Avenue Apartments. Now the Carney's Point Senior Center, I think, is the next on the list. Um, Carney's Point. <laughs> DuPont Avenue, she said? DuPont Highway. I just, I just follow Jim. That's what I do. We meet here and I follow Jim. Yeah, so we're working to expand. So God, God has made these doors open, and as these doors have opened, he's provided what was needed. The Kent Avenue is a good story, right? So we were going to Village Arms and Pensgrove Towers, and it's like, well, we are praying that we want to go to Kent Avenue, but we weren't sure what to do next, and do we have the volunteers, and are we ready? And Jim and Carol got assigned there through Bushels of Blessing. Met the manager, got the code to the door, and all, God just opened up all, like literally and figuratively, opened up all the doors. He gave us food through Bushels of Blessings and through Wawa, and he gave them the contact. We got to meet the person in charge over there. God just, he made, he, he made the mountains low and the, and the valleys full and that road straight. And so, yeah. They were so happy when Chris got there yesterday. There's, there's one gentleman in a wheelchair who's always waiting on Saturdays, and Chris got to give him some cookies from Wawa. And um, Wawa has been very supportive because they don't always have people who show up to pick up the food, and they don't want to throw it away. So we get, an, we get like a, a, basically like a little menu of what they're going to give us. But every, I think every time we've been, they give us extra because there's other stuff that people didn't pick up. And they're giving it to us because they know we're there and we're going to give it out to the neighborhood. Also, any days that people don't show up, they're going to give them the care. Right. So she'll pass them on, especially on Tuesday and Wednesday. She's, she works. Yeah. So on Tuesday and Wednesday, yeah. we're going to need other people to pick them up. So God is opening all these doors. And he's continuing to do that. So. Yeah. Every time it seems like there's a roadblock, God turns it into an abundant blessing. Like when the truck broke down at the mission. The truck broke down, they didn't know what they were going to do, they ended up getting a, a, big, a bigger truck. So now, in, you know, now they can bring us 10 pallets instead of 8. So now we get 200 boxes at a time. Right? So, I mean, it's, it's, it's God. He opens every door. And because we're looking to expand that's true so we're working on changing the name that was discussed at the last meeting because we're going out to other places and not just Pennsville we've been calling ourselves the Pennsville Community Pantry but they're working on changing the name to include something a little bigger than that well I think we're going to go with Tri-County because right now we got Gloucester and Salem and well depending on which third county you want Newcastle um, yeah. but we're expanding. So they were, they were thinking Tri-County is a good way to, it gives us a name that belongs to us. It's not just the food pantry, but it's generic enough that it works with us as we expand and work with other churches. So, yeah, God has just been opening all these doors. Every time we hit a roadblock, God knocks it down and gives us more blessings. Yeah, and I think he's laughing the whole time because it's his pleasure to care for his children. And one of our prayers, both in the church board and the pantry board, has been we don't want to make a plan and then insist that God blesses it. We want to look where God is working, where the Holy Spirit is working, and follow. So like this story with Ken Avenue, it was a confirmation to our prayers. We said, God, we think this is where we should go next. Let us know. They get a sign. They get the code. They meet the person. God's Rolls out the red carpet for us, right? Literally. Yeah. So that has been our consistent prayer, that we will not make a plan and then insist that God takes care of us, but that we would see where God is going and join him in that work. So caring for the kids and caring for these homes. So we started with, um, you know, places where it was mostly elderly. 
Now we're going into low-income housing for families in Kent Avenue. So when you look at our community, these are the kinds of places that have the greatest needs, right? You know, the housing for elderly who don't have food, families who need help, kids who don't have a safe place to play, and, um, and God is, is equipping us. And it's funny, because, uh, and I hope you take this the right way, when, when, if you come here on a Sunday morning, we don't look like a very big church. But when you start looking at the list of ministries that we're involved in, we're, we're punching above our weight here. And it's all because of God. It's not us. Yeah. We're just a bunch of ninnies. Yeah. Yeah, so God, God blesses the foolish to, to spurn the wise. So I'm happy to be foolish. Amen. Amen. So that's what this has all been. The last, the last year has been God knocking down barriers and sending in. Every time we have a pantry day and we, we run out of food, we get even more food the next time. Because first we were getting 120 boxes. Then they brought 160 boxes. Then the truck broke down. We're like, oh, no, we don't have any boxes. And then they brought 200 boxes. Right? And we had 40 chickens. And we're like, God, I don't know if that's enough chickens. And the Edgar got 50 more chickens. Now we have 90 chickens. That's a lot of chickens. Yeah, like the psalm this morning, right? He is our shield around us. You can sleep and wake up in peace because he's taking care of us. Amen. Amen. So I can't tell you what the whole next year is going to bring because God keeps surprising us. But I know for right now, God is sending us out into our community but he's also bringing churches together. That's been a big part of what has happened this year. It's multiple churches coming together, loving each other, trusting each other. You know, like, uh, you know, Carol and Jim donate bread for a bake sale at another church, and then this church hosts us, and then we help them. And we're all, we're all worshiping Jesus, and we're all helping each other. We're not enemies. We're brothers and sisters. We can love each other and support each other in unity, like Jesus prayed in John 17. So, sorry, announcements just went a half an hour, but I get excited when I hear this. This is our testimony, right? This is what God is doing in our little corner of the world. So many people say that God doesn't care, or we're abandoned, or it's all terrible. And I'm not saying there isn't bad stuff in the world. But if you look just a little bit, if you peek just a little bit, God is doing all kinds of things. And we get to be right here in the middle. Oh, you need something? Oh, God gives it. Yay! And we just sit here and clap. Like, look at God work. Yeah. You know, this morning I prayed because I was so tired. <laughs> I almost killed me. I know it almost killed a bunch of other people. And I, I, I prayed to God and I told him this morning, I said, there's mornings when I just don't even feel like getting out of bed. Mm-hmm. Well, when I open my eyes and take that first breath, I'm actually glad I'm looking forward to the day because yeah. I want to see what God has in store for me today. Yeah. So when I tell you come to the pantry on Saturday and see what's happening, I mean it. I know pretty much everybody here has, but come out. You can get a cup of hot chocolate. You can get a coffee. Christy always makes pastries. You know, it's 8.30 to 11.30. Mm-hmm. So, and we also work to make some deliveries. So if you need deliveries, talk to us. We can't guarantee we can make every delivery that you ask for on that day. But we pretty much get to everybody within a couple of days. And when you all go to the pantry, is we care? Yeah, so that was the idea, that we're going to have a name, but then the logo is We Care. So. That's the plan. So we're getting it all straightened out. Um, Terry was going to start working on registering a new Facebook group and getting some, as long as the name isn't taken and we make sure that all works then we, we need to print up some new t-shirts anyway. So we're going to get some new t-shirts. And we've actually got some local businesses that might want to sponsor us. You know how, like, at the t-ball game, they got the things out back? Well, we might have some local businesses. We're going to put their logo on the back of the shirt as people who support the pantry. And then they're going to pledge to give a certain amount every year to the pantry. The big donators. Well, more than one. But, yeah, hopefully it's the whole shirt full. <laughs> Listen, I'll walk around like a NASCAR if it brings food to the pantry. <laughs> you can put a patch on my forehead. 
Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Well, that's kind of how this works, right? We, we th they donate and we thank them. Just like if you've ever seen like a March of Dimes t-shirt with all the logos on the back. That's the kind of thing we're talking about. These are local businesses that support the pantry. The thriving ones, yeah, because thriving gave it, they give us a thousand dollars a year, twice a year they do the race to five hundred, and they always give us a check. So a thousand dollars a year comes from thriving every year. So, I don't know much about the company, but I know they do that, and that's a good thing. Yeah, it's like a it's a financial services company. But, yeah. So yeah, it's just it's amazing, and I just want you guys to know that it's hard. I know, like you said, Jim, at the end of the day yesterday, quite a few of us were, uh, we had a hitch in our giddy up. <laughs> yeah. Amen. But God is good. God is good. You know? Even Moses needed somebody to hold his arms up, and that's why we do it together. All right, I'm going to, I guess I'm done uh, bragging on y'all, but it's a good thing. Um, who has prayer requests for tonight? Gina? Okay. Thank you. Yeah, if you don't know, Janet Williams had her surgery this week. Uh, she came through it very well. They had, she had a displaced fracture? Is that what it was called? Displaced fracture? Yeah. in her elbow where the bone was like floating so they they did that and they were worried they might have to operate up here but they did not they only worked on her elbow they didn't have to work up here in her arm um, yeah so she's she's still you know bound up and she's got physical therapy and all but the surgery it was the best case scenario they didn't even have to touch the second spot now she does have physical therapy coming up and especially when you're stiff for a while that's going to be painful but she has a physical therapist that she gets along with very well. She's been to him many times. Um, so that's a good thing, too. And I'll tell you, Tyler's so sweet taking care of her. You know, he, she can't pour tea with one arm, so he puts several glasses of iced tea in the fridge ready for her to go, and he opens her Jello for her for the day before he leaves for work. So she's got her Jello and her iced tea that she can get, and he sets her puzzle table up for her. And he is such a sweetheart. Yeah, he's doing a good, yeah, Heather was there helping her, there, it's, it's, it's a blessing to see people taking care of each other. Yep, it's scheduled. Okay, so Cheryl's going to be having surgery on her spine, play for her, Darlene. Sure. Okay, who else has a prayer? A praise for, yeah, tell everybody about our miracle baby if they didn't hear on Wednesday. Well, I don't know. Maybe they didn't. Uh, we heard from my daughter-in-law. She works at the uh, Catholic Hospital. She's a very supervisor. And, of course, baby Troy's mom is her niece. So she told us that look, for the first week of August, we're probably going to get his kidney transplant. His dad was tested, and he's a perfect match for him. So we're just waiting for him to get just a little bit later, probably first week of So we knew that a couple of weeks ago that they found out his dad was a match, but now he's just about big enough for the surgery. So amen. Yeah. That is wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right. Who else has a prayer request? Yep. Yeah. Let's pray for our friends Faye and Marty. They're both dealing with some hard stuff. If you visit Faye, uh, her hedgehog by her chair is named Harry. You want everybody to know that. Uh, Danny got her a little stuffed hedgehog with bunny ears for Easter. And when we visit her, we all named the hedgehog together. So we named him Harry. So her little hedgehog near her chair is named Harry. You can say hi to Harry when you visit today. Um, yeah. Um, Diane had a praise. She's down with the kids, so she can't share it with you in person. But she said that Ruthann is doing very well. She's been cleared to start walking with the walker again. 
So she had had a, a fracture in her leg last year. It turned out it, it, the cast did not help and it had been broken for several months. She had to have surgery and she's been having physical therapy. So she's able to stand herself. She basically, she can get herself from the bed of the chair into her wheelchair safely on her own. You know, she can hold her weight for that. And now they're working on her walking. So it's been wonderful. They weren't sure that she was going to be able to get back to that after the leg had been so damaged. But wonderful things, wonderful things. Yeah, George was so happy. He was carrying boxes for us for hours yesterday. <laughs> he is a blessing to us. Um, Venus asked us to pray. She met with a woman. At, she met a woman at the yard sale. Um, her father passed away, and then the next day, her son was diagnosed with epilepsy. So she had come to the yard sale just as a way to get her mind off of things because it was at a church. And Venus struck up a conversation with her, and they spoke and prayed. And so we're, I don't know if we have permission to share her name, but you can pray for her. And thank God, you know, the way that God's been using Venus. Um, we need to pray for Daryl's family. His cousin Marie passed away this week. So please pray for them. Um, also, poor Hunter broke a tooth. We figured out why poor Hunter was off this week. He broke his canine in half. That's Daryl and Charlene's dog. So I don't know how they give a dog a root canal, but I think you're going to find out. <laughs> So, yeah. I don't know. I thought a gold tooth, but everybody in Sunday school thought that was ridiculous. I think it's a wonderful idea. You get his name carved in the front, or you say like Sloan across it or something like that. But anyway, poor Hunter's had a hard week. He was chewing a bone and broke his tooth. Uh, we talked about baby Troy. We talked about Janet. Um, Jeff's mom is doing well, so please keep praying for her, Peggy. She is home and recovering, and uh, she's good enough that she's bugging Jeff, so amen for that. Um, I think that's... Yep, so we have some unspokens that we've been praying, and we're going to continue those. We have unspokens for two women who have been diagnosed with breast cancer and are in treatment. And then also three families that we've been praying for in slightly different ways, but they're dealing with uh, divorce and addiction and struggles within their homes. Okay. Well, let us know, everybody. If anybody knows that somebody's got a spare window unit they're trying to get rid of, we got a window that needs an air conditioner. All right, anything else before we go to prayer? Please, sister. Mm. And it starts with us, loving our neighbors. Yeah. If everyone who called themselves a Christian in our country loved our neighbors, we have a very different country. So we should all start working on that. And if you're doing it, amen, don't stop. Yeah. Anything else? All right, let's pray. Father God, thank you for this day. Thank you again. Thank you for a chance to gather and celebrate. Thank you for a chance to mourn and come together as we wait. Thank you, Father, that we can do this together with you. Uh, we start with um, our unspoken prayer requests, Father, from Gina and from Darlene and from Venus. We pray for the two young women who have breast cancer, Father. We know 
that one is responding well to her treatment and the other we haven't heard from. And we lift them both up to you, Father. We lift up the three families that we've been praying for. Um, unfortunately, Father, it seems that the adults involved are, are continuing to make destructive choices. And so our hearts are broken, not just for the adults, but especially their children that are wrapped up in all of this. Please help them, Father. We lift up our sister Janet. Father, thank you that the surgery went well. And we pray for continued recovery. We thank you for Heather and Tyler and the rest of the family who are there taking care of Janet. We thank you that she's been able to rest well. And we pray for her physical therapy. We lift up our sister Cheryl, Father. We pray that you will be with her through this surgery process. We pray, Father, that um, you will bring healing to her legs. The, the numbness and the nerve pain that she's been struggling with, that's so dangerous, Father. We pray that in the meantime, before the surgery, please continue to protect her to keep her from falling and getting hurt. Father, we lift up baby Troy and his family to you. Thank you for the wonderful news that they've got a surgery date coming up in August. We pray for Sarah and Michael and Troy and all the hospital staff and doctors and nurses and all the people who are working to love on their family. Keep them in the palm of your hand, Father. We lift up Faye and Marty to you, Father. You know the things that they're dealing with in their lives. And uh, we pray for them and for their family members who are trying to care for them. We lift up our brother George. Father, thank you that he was able to come and help us yesterday. And we look forward to him helping us on pantry day. And thank you for the friendship that you've built between George and Diane. <coughs> that you've helped her to minister to him. And thank you for bringing him into our lives, Father. Um, we lift up uh, Ruth Ann to you, George's mom. Father, thank you that she is healing and doing well. We pray that she would be walking safely before her therapy time is done. We lift up Daryl's family at the passing of his cousin Marie. Pray that you would be with her family. Father, we lift up Hunter. Please care for him. Um, thank you that, that they figured out what was going on. Father, we lift up this woman that Venus got to meet and pray with yesterday at the yard sale. Thank you for bringing them together, and thank you for giving Venus the heart and the compassion and the wisdom to, to listen and pray. We lift her up, Father, as she, her father has passed away, and her son has a, a serious medical diagnosis. Father, please help their family. We thank you that Jeff's mom, Peggy, is healing, and we pray for continued recovery for her, Father. Um, we lift up our nation. As Sister Monica said, Father, our, our world is broken, and our nation is going in a very dangerous direction with more hatred and more violence. People are not caring for each other. We're listening to one another. I pray, Father, that we would stop and take a breath and have peace. We lift up our world to you, Father. Um, we think of the increasing violence in Ukraine the, the, the last two days with all the missile strikes. You know, there are a lot of people who've lost loved ones. A lot of people have passed away, Father. Senseless violence. We pray for peace. We pray for a diplomatic resolution that would stop this fighting so that the innocents would stop dying because of some stupid ego trip that somebody's on. Father, help us as your body in this world. Help your children in this world to be your priesthood, to be salt and light. Father, help us to live in a different way that doesn't just tell the world about you, but shows the world what happens when lives are surrendered to you. So please help us to do that, Father, to be surrendered completely to you, to be filled with your spirit, and to live in your light and your love. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Okay, so we are in the Gospel of John. We missed a week last week for Mother's Day, so... No worries if you're not quite sure what we've been talking about. It's been two weeks since we met. We are in chapter 13. I'm pretty sure once I get my outline open here. Yep. 
Yep, chapter 13, we talked about the foot washing last time. We read up to verse 11. So we talked about the actual events of the foot washing. And just like I said, to make sure we're all on the same page, Jesus and the disciples at this point had come back to Jerusalem. They were preparing for Jesus' arrest and execution. And they had gathered together for the Last Supper. And the events of this chapter happen just before the supper. As they come into that upper room to have the, the Passover meal together, Jesus put a towel around his waist and got on his knees and washed their feet. One of the very important points we talked about last time was that Judas is included in that number. That Judas is one of the people whose feet Jesus washed. Also, when Jesus got to Peter, do you guys remember how Peter reacted? Like Peter usually does, right? He says, no, you can't wash my feet. And Jesus says, Peter, I, I got to do this. And Peter says, okay, wash my whole body. And Jesus is like, Peter, it's just your feet. It's okay. He's excitable, right? I think that Peter is eager to please Jesus. And sometimes he gets ahead of things a little bit, right? Sometimes he assumes he knows what Jesus wants and jumps that direction, and it's not where Jesus is going. Now, I will say, there's a very big difference from the Peter we're seeing here and the Peter we see after Pentecost. The whole, his encounter with the Holy Spirit changed him dramatically. So now, where we pick up in verse 12, um, Jesus puts his robe back on and starts to explain what this means and tell them the things that are going to happen. Okay? So could somebody please read chapter thir John 13, verses 12 to 16. Yeah. Thank you, sir. After washing their feet, he put on his robe again and sat down and asked, Do you understand what I was doing? You call me teacher and Lord, and you're right, because that's what I am. And since I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. I have given you an example to follow. Do as I have done to you. I tell you the truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor is the messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Thank you, brother. All right, so, as we've seen oftentimes, when Jesus does something or says something, do the disciples always get it on the first try? No. no, they're a lot like us, right? We need a little extra help. So Jesus starts by asking, do you understand? Why is he asking? He yep, he knows they don't. They know something big happened, right? Because their rabbi got on his knees and washed their feet. They knew it was a big deal, but they don't quite understand what it means. Right? And thankfully, he explains it so we can know too. Um... Jesus goes from that question, before he gets to the explanation, verse 13, he adds in something here. What does he say in verse 13? Okay. Yeah. So why do you think Jesus would begin this explanation by pointing out that he is their Lord and their rabbi? Exactly. Anybody in a position of authority would not be the one washing feet. So he's saying, I am your rabbi, you call me Lord, and that's right. That's what I am. Right? So he's just setting the stage. Jesus is in authority, and normally the person in authority would not serve someone who is perceived to be lower than them in status. Right? It was always the, the lowest person of status who had to wash the feet. And usually, it, they wouldn't allow a Jewish man to do it. So, um, so, he reminds them of his authority. And then in verse 14, he kind of hits them with the explanation. What's he say in verse 14? Yeah. Since I, your Lord and teacher, wash your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. Okay, so... 
Do you think that the issue here is dirty feet? No. What's Jesus trying to tell them? Humility, do unto others. Yeah. Follow this example. Yeah. So we see this happen a little bit um, in Philemon. I'm going to make a connection here to something Paul wrote. In, in the letter to Philemon, Paul is writing a letter to a man who owns a slave. The slave's name is Onesimus. And Onesimus has escaped Philemon's house and then later on became a Christian under Paul's teaching. And Paul realizes, hey, I know your master. And that guy's a Christian too. And Paul writes to Philemon and says, any debt or kindness that you would deal with me, do that to him. If you would greet me with love, greet Onesimus with love. If you would forgive me, forgive Onesimus, right? Paul's using his own relationship in authority over Philemon saying, if you would treat me with love and respect, you should pay that same love and respect to Onesimus, who's technically your slave and in that society had no rights as a person. But Paul's saying, no, it's not like that. That when we follow Jesus, it's not that some people have rights and other people don't. And it's not that we love people because we think they deserve it. We love people because that's what Jesus does. And we are called to follow the example of Jesus, right? So he's not saying, Peter, wash John's feet because he's the disciple I love. And John, wash Nathaniel's feet because he drew up the plans for the tent. It's none of that stuff. Jesus is saying, I did this. And because I did this, you need to do this. It has nothing to do with whether I think the other person deserves it or not, or whether I think I should do it for the other person. It has to do with the fact that Jesus did it, and he told me to be like him. So even, even the question of deserving doesn't enter into this at all. Right? It's, it's not to be considered. Is that normally how people do things? If you lend somebody your lawnmower, and they run over a stump, and break it. Are you going to lend them your lawnmower again? Not that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you got me there. Not that one. Yeah. That was good. Charlie, if you lent me some of your tools and I didn't return them, would you lend me more tools? <laughs> All right. It'd be tricky, right? That's that's how people normally work. All right. And I'm I'm not saying we're not human, but Jesus is trying to say in his kingdom, it can't work like that. Because there are no people who are worth more than other people, and there are no people who are worth less than other people. <laughs> Here you go, spray them pink. Yeah. <laughs> Verse 15. He repeats it, but he slightly escalates the terms. The first time he said... Since I wash your feet, you ought to wash each other's feet. You should do it, right? Now, in verse 15, he says, I have given you an example, do as I have done to you. So now we've gone from you ought to, to do it, okay? We're escalating. Verse 16, he takes it up a little bit more. I tell you the truth. When Jesus uses that phrase, I tell you the truth, or in the King James, verily, verily. What is that? What's Jesus about to say? Something important. Yeah, exactly. Right? I tell you the truth. That means, listen up, the next thing's important. Sure, God's honest truth. Slaves are not greater than their master, nor is a messenger more important than the one who sends the message. Now I tell you these things. Now that I tell you these things, God will bless you for doing them. So he's repeated this several different ways from several different perspectives. Is there any wiggle room here? No? No. Okay. I don't either. So the disciples, they're stuck. They got to help people. Thank God I wasn't there, because I don't want to wash people's feet. 
Oh, wait a minute. Do you think that Jesus' words only applied to those guys? Who does this command apply to? Everyone. Carol? Me? Daryl? All of us? No exceptions. If I want to follow Jesus, yes. Let me, let me ask a question based on that. Is there any way I can follow Jesus and not do this? No. No. We, I got to say that again, right? There is no way that we can follow Jesus and not do this. Okay? No way. No exceptions. Now, does that mean you, we are all going to be called to love the same people in the same way? No. no. Jim and Carol bake bread for people. If I bake bread for people, it would be a punishment, right? <laughs> but they bake bread, and it's a blessing, right? We're called to help in different ways, right? If I fix the front door that Daryl fixed, the, it, it would not open, or it would be laying on the ground, right? It certainly wouldn't be square and getting compliments. We all have different giftings. We all have different resources. So I'm going to go back a little bit. When John the Baptist was preaching, preparing the way for Jesus, he gave a special command. He was talking about the Messiah, and the people said, well, how do we prepare for the coming of the Messiah? Repent. Right? Which is good. That's a good religious word. But then he said something else. Yeah, he's, well, after the repent and be baptized, he said, if you have two coats and your neighbor doesn't have a coat, Give one of your coats to your neighbor. If I don't have a coat, am I responsible for giving Carol a coat? No. no. If Carol has 12 coats and I have two coats, am I supposed to give her a coat? No. I might steal some of your coats. No. If you have two and they have none, give one of yours so you both have one. Okay? What does that sound like to you? Nursery rhymes? Sounds like a fairy tale, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. This is where somebody might step in and say, well, that's a great idea and it's idealist, idealistic, but the world doesn't work that way. <laughs> Charlene says exactly. Yeah. Or a realist. That's what I tell my wife. Okay, so that's the thing, right? The world doesn't work that way because the world, they're not following Jesus. Okay? But you and I, can we work that way? We're not supposed to be. It's, be. it's getting harder and harder each year in our country to tell the difference between the Christians and the non Christians. A lot of the people who are showing up and helping and loving are not Christians. And a lot of the people who are kicking and screaming and causing all the trouble are Christians. Or say they are. That's got to change. And where does it start? Casting Crowns told us. It's got to start right here. Right now. Yeah. It starts with us. That's what yesterday was all about. All that stuff that got donated yesterday, there was some really nice stuff. There were sets of dishes, and there were books and puzzles. There was furniture. Oh, my God. I was setting stuff up on Friday and I saw these blue plates that look just like the set my mom has. <laughs> and so I called her up and I was like, Mom, I found these plates that look just like yours. Do you want me to buy them for you to match your set? And you know what she said? It was her, it was her set. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and Jim and Carol bought a Corgi notebook to give to Diane because it looked like Nigel. And Diane had donated it. <laughs> so there's some silliness that happened in this. But the point is, all those people, they could have kept that stuff, right? Like the one set of dishes, it was china. It had the gold edges and the flowers and had the teacups and saucers, like the whole set. They could have kept that. But they didn't. They gave it up to help other people. The food that comes into the pantry, right? Uh -uh. Food's expensive, we all know it. 
But every month, people sacrifice to give food to strangers so they can eat. That's a beautiful thing. And that's what the early church did. After Pentecost, in Acts, that's what the church did. In Acts chapter 4, you can read it, right? They all lived together, and the people who had a lot, what did they do? They even went so far as to sell their property. Yeah. And you know, back, it's, now owning property is important. Back then, it was really important. Because you didn't have rights if you didn't own the property. So to give that up just to help somebody else, that's a big deal. But Jesus is telling us it's not a one-time thing. It's not just, to, oh, well, you're the son of God. It's not that. And it's not just the church way back then. It is always supposed to be the mark of the church. It's always, Now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. Who's the you? Everyone. Anybody reading it, right? Now that you know these things. Do you know these things? You do. And he meant it. Now, I want to flip the question around. Sometimes when, when I'm trying to learn a statement, I try to look at the opposite of the statement and see what that tells me. It helps me to learn some things. Jesus says, now that you know these things, God will bless you for doing them. What if I don't do them? You know, Friday when we were setting up, we were beat up and we were tired and we were hurt. And we were laughing like a bunch of idiots. Right? Because it's fun to get together and care for people. There's a joy that you get to experience. And I know a lot of you know what this is like. When God says that you'll be blessed when you do these things, he doesn't mean if you wash somebody's feet you're going to find a $20 bill in the street. Right? That's not what God's blessing means. It means that when you do these things, you will be in a good relationship with God because you're living as who you were meant to be and as he told us to be. That's how we're right with God. It's pretty clear to me in our country when the top 3% of people own more than the next 90%, that's not fair. Right? That's, that's not this. Right? I don't know if I told you about this. I was listening to a video the other day. I'm an 80s kid, so I was really into WWF, right? Back when wrestling was real. That was a joke. You guys remember Jesse Ventura? Jesse the Bob Ventura, yeah. Um, he was mayor, of, or he was a governor of Ventura for a while. Anyway, he said, uh, there's this clip, and I think it was from a couple years ago, but I just saw it a couple weeks ago. He said, there's nobody who's worth a billion dollars. He said the hardest he ever worked in his life was the summer after he graduated high school. He worked on a road maintenance crew for the state, and he ran a jackhammer all summer. And he said it was the hardest he'd ever worked in his life. It's the hardest he ever worked, even harder than anything he did after that. And he said he got paid the least for that. He said, you're telling me that that work is worth less than somebody sitting in a desk? And yet somehow in our country, we do that, right? We draw these lines and we say that some people are worth more than others. Our whole system here is basically built on the idea that time is money and some people's time is worth more than other people's time. Right? If I work minimum wage, I got to work five or six hours to pay for one hour at the mechanic. Right? Because he's got a skill I don't have, so his time is worth more than my time. But as that expands and expands, it ends up saying some people don't matter and some people do. That we should care about what some people think and we shouldn't care about what other people think. That's not what Jesus is saying. See, we all matter. And if you have extra, it's wrong to keep it to yourself. 
I was too sweaty to get included in the group on. <laughs> but that was four people from three, from three different churches. Celebrating God's victory. Celebrating the fact that we were doing God's work and it that God just blessed us so much that we couldn't believe it. Yeah. You know, we, we had raised over $500 before the yard sale even started. Yeah. Just the stuff that the volunteers donated. I'm probably not supposed to tell you that, but I just did. Right? And it's a joy. I think you're getting what I'm saying, right? I'm not trying to shove anything down your throat, but I want to make sure I say it clearly. What Jesus is telling us, the commands of Jesus, they are not optional. When he tells us to care for one another, to love one another, that the ones that the world says are worthless are the ones that he goes out and chases down, we have to live like that. I was talking to somebody earlier this week who's working on planting a church. And he wanted to know what our church was doing and how we were starting to grow. I said, well, we pretty much do everything opposite of what all the books tell you to do, right? Because if you're trying to plant a church or trying to grow a church, all the books say, you know, basically you got to run your church like a, like a bit, like a sales, right? Like, you want to attract customers in, and you want to give them what they want, and you want to go after certain populations, and you want to have lost leaders like services where it costs the church money to have people there, but you're giving them stuff so they come back. Right? That's what all the books say, right? Well, that's what some churches become. They become big and bloated, and they need lots of money coming in in order to keep up everything they're doing. And then their focus becomes, we got to keep the lights on. And if the only reason we exist as a church is to keep the lights on, God should burn it down. Wipe us all out. So he's like, well, where do you go to recruit people to your church? I was like, well, right now we're going to these two nursing homes. He's like, so they're coming to your church? And I was like, no, no. Are they going to? No, no, I don't think anybody... They don't have cars. <laughs> so we go to them. But I was like, N no, I, I don't think any of those people are ever going to come to our church. They're not going to become members here. Everybody's poor. No, it's not like somebody's going to send us a big check or anything. Like, it's not going to happen. And he's like, oh, well, all the kids are getting their parents in. And no. No. <laughs> no, we, just, we know the kids need a place to go. And we're loving on them. They run to the church. All these kids, only one mom was out here. They, all these kids, one mom drove her two boys. But all the other kids walked around here or rode bikes. There's a row of bikes out there. Isn't that awesome? We need to get a bike rack. Amen? Yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. And they invite each other. And often it's the ones who are the most ornery who are the best recruiters. <laughs> but... And so he's like, so how do you, he's like, so how are you doing it? I was like, well, if you look at our numbers, we're not really growing. Like our Sunday morning attendance is not really going up. But I'll tell you, tonight, I can almost guarantee you that we have more people in this building tonight than we did this morning. Not in this room, but with all the kids down the hallway. We can, we can check the papers if you want afterwards. Charlene's good with numbers. But we, we get more people here on a Sunday night than we do on a Sunday morning. Why? People do stuff, a lot of stuff. Yeah. So I'm not trying to say everybody's got to go to church 10 times a week. I'm just saying, if we want to live as a church, we have to be obedient to Christ. And that doesn't always mean doing what everybody else says we should do. Right? All the church growth things say sell your building in town, 
buy property on the edge of town where you can get all this grass and go to the developments and recruit the young professionals with kids who are going to come and give you lots of money. That's what they all say. But that, that's not what Jesus did. Who did Jesus go to? What, who did Jesus have dinner with? Tax collectors and prostitutes. Yeah. The dream team. Who did he pick as his disciples? Four fishermen, a zealot, a bunch of rejects. All the people nobody wanted. Why did he pick those people? If he needed to save the world, why did he pick those people? His father told him to? Oh, that's a good answer. Because it's not about the people, right? Because it's about God. Why did God choose Gideon to fight a battle? The farmer hiding in a hole. Right? He show his glory. When that angel came up and said, Mighty warrior, God is sending you. What do you think? That's probably what Gideon did, right? <laughs> Mighty, Mighty warrior. <laughs> right? Say what? Yeah, I'm, I'm work. It's, work. it's going to be good. Mighty warrior, go in the strength that you have. He's like, I don't know how to fight. I got a pitchfork. And I don't even have any friends. And God just says, go. And then he puts together an army. This is Judges chapter 6, if you want to read it. He, he does. He recruits an army. It's 300,000 men. That's a lot of people. Like, even for now, that's a big army. right? And they go marching. And you know what God says? That's too many. That's too many. Yeah. So first he's yeah. So first he says anybody who's afraid, you don't have to come. You can just sit here by the road with the baggage. You're cool. If you're afraid, you stay here. Right? That's not usually how generals speak. And then he's down to like thirty thousand, right? Then, then he goes to the next one, and God says, No, you still got too many. He says, Watch them when they drink the water. The people who drink the water this way, keep the people who drink the water that way don't keep. So he gets down to 300 men. Thousands and thousands of men down to 300. So, oh, this must be like the Navy SEALs, right? No. Do you know what God sends them into battle with? Catapults and flamethrowers and angels with... So no. A torch and a pot. A clay pot. Not a metal pot. A clay pot. And then he says, bang them together. Now you don't even have a clay pot anymore. Right? You got a torch and a broken pot, and now you're lit up for all the enemies to see. But God made it work. When they did that, when they broke the pots and lit the torches and yelled, the army thought they were surrounded, the bad guys. And they all ran out of their tents and their Superman undies and started swinging their swords around, and they all killed each other. Right? That's what it was. This is how God works. This is how God works. Put a towel around your waist and wash some feet. That's it. But God, it doesn't make sense. It's not supposed to. This isn't about the powers of this world or the wisdom of people or the strength or resources of people. It's about God. And when you try to use human logic to work, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. The numbers don't add up. We've, with this deposit, we've got over $24,000 in the bank account for the food pantry. That doesn't work. That shouldn't happen. Our tiny pantry, in, in what, two and a half years, we've raised almost $25,000? It shouldn't work. We've got checks coming in from Florida and checks coming in from other churches. And God just said, look, just watch. Just watch. But God, we need, no, no, you don't. Just watch. And he's doing it. And it's not, maybe it's not as fast as we want or the way we want or whatever. But it's God's story and he's writing it his way. That's what Jesus is saying. Paul says it another way. He says, we don't lord our authority around like the Gentiles do. Right? So let's keep doing it. We're doing something right. We're doing something right. So let's keep doing that.
Let's keep following Jesus. Let's keep washing feet. Keep loving our neighbor. He gives us enough food to give away. Right? Jim asked me one time, and this was months ago. I don't know if you remember this. He said, uh, how long do you think we're going to keep this up? He said, we're going to ride it till the wheels fall off. <laughs> as long as God keeps sending us food, we're going to keep giving away. And he just gives them more and more and more. Overflowing the storehouses. Mm hmm. And it doesn't wait two, three months to do it. You can keep improving every month, every month, every month. Yeah. We can't even keep up anymore. More people, like more volunteers, more food. It's like we can't. Amen. Yeah. So that's what Jesus is saying, right? Don't depend on yourself. Don't try to boss people around. He's got this. All right, let's close there. Father God, thank you for this word. Thank you for this gospel that we get to study. And thank you for the example that Jesus set. Thank you for explaining it to us <laughs> to make sure that we understand it. Father, help us to do what Jesus said. Help us to surrender ourselves. Help us to be on our knees with a towel around our waist, washing feet. Help us to do it with love and joy as servants of your Son. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, well, we've got two birthdays to celebrate tonight. We've got dinner. We've got extra food that came in. So it's going to be good.